بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعه له إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد حياكم الله uh, إن شاء الله تعالى this class is going to be kind of fast um, I didn't want there to be a, a a week where we just only had like one class or maybe no class. So I'm really pushing myself here, inshallah ta'ala, so we can um so we can uh do this. So it's gonna be really short. We're gonna cover uh a small amount of information, Bidnanahi and Jinna Jalalu. Okay, so let's um, let's get to it. Okay, so <clears throat> we're still going over principles pertaining to the names of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And when it comes to the name of Allah, there are three things those names imply. There are three things those names imply. The names of Allah imply three things, okay? One, it, impl- it implies that there is an actual being which those names apply to. There's an actual being that these names apply to, okay? So these names are, aren't just names by themselves, without it there being something that is that those names are called or or yes exactly those names are called that that being that that are that is called by those names actually exist okay and they're not just names by themselves without it being attributed to some thing or some one in this case that someone is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Okay, another thing is that those names implies that there are attributes which are derived from what those names entail. they are attributes which are derived from what those names entail. And there are four categories to this. Um, that the title name, okay, the title name Allah entails all the meanings which are found in all the other names. So when we say Allah, we can understand from that a rahman you know, a rahman meaning the most merciful right the name allah it 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 encompasses the meaning which is in the name al rahman i mean that is part of what allah means okay uh, another another thing is that it entails a personal attribute such as the name al uh, asamir or the all hearing Okay, so every name, for every name, there's an attribute that comes with it. For every name, there's an attribute that comes with it. Okay, and then also it entails a personal action, such as the name, the creator. Okay, so when we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al khal he's the creator, that means it's an action that goes with that name, which is creating. Right, and uh, the fourth thing is it entails him being far removed from any deficiency and defect which we might attribute to those names. Like, for example, someone might say, if, if Allah is a Samir, right, if Allah is the all hearing, that means that, um, or Allah is hearing, depending on how you translate. I mean, if you translate all hearing, then obviously there's no deficiency, but if you translate it as the hearing, then someone may say, well, there are certain things that he can't hear, or that means that his ears can go deaf because if he hears something, you know, they try, they try to attribute uh, deficiencies and defects which are attributed to the creation when it comes to their hearing and their ears and things of that nature, right? So they, they, they use those, their understanding, their limited understanding of these senses and attributes and they say, well, then this also will apply to Allah if we say that 
this is part of his attribute or this is one of his names. Okay, so we understand then that the names that we, we ascribe to Allah has no deficiency or defect, right? And Allah is removed from all of that. Any name that might imply that there's some defect to it, then that is not something that we can attribute to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing is that the names of Allah implies that they that their attributes, which aren't derived from his name, such as Al-Qudus and as salam Okay. So every name has an attribute, but not every attribute has a name, is basically what this is saying here, right? Not every attribute has a name. So when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, he plans, for example, and he's the greater, greatest of planners. Do we attribute from that the name, the greatest of planners? No, right, like that. So not every attribute entails that there is a name that comes from it, but every name has an attribute. Okay, so let's look at an example, like the name Ar-Rahman, which means the most merciful, implies that there is a being with that name, right? There's a being with that name, and that name entails mercy. That's the attribute that comes with that name, right? And implies that the attribute of life as well, right? So other attributes uh, that must be there in order for this name to make sense also come into fruition, also are there, also are present. So you cannot have mercy without life and so forth. Okay, so that's that. We're done with the, um, the subject matter of Allah's uh, name and attribute for today. And um, we still got some more principles to cover before we actually get into the meaning of some of the names. Be patient, brothers and sisters. Okay, so let's get out of that. And let's go into fiqh, kifatul hulam. And this is uh, pretty much pretty simple. We're continuing from where we left off. And we've discussed everything up to a hundred and... 20, I guess you could say, 120 camels. And that, you know, for every uh, camel after 100, you go back to a sheep for every five. All right, so that's the last thing we cover. So the sheikh, he then goes on to say, Bintu Mahadin Thumma Hikatan. Okay, let me say it over again because I messed up the uh, the rhyming scheme. Bintu Mahadin Thumma Hikatani Walmiatu Al Khamsuna Fiha. Danny. Okay. So basically here, the Sheikh is saying that for 125 camels, you now have to give a different count, which is a two-year-old she camel, which is a bint mahad, right? It's a two-year-old she camel. And two four-year-old she camel, which is a hikka. Okay, so two hikka and one bint mahad. So with that being said, then we have this, right? We have a new addition to the uh, the sheet that we've um, laid out, and that it is for one hundred and twenty-five camels. You have a one two-year-old and two four-year-old 
she camels have to be given for zakat. And there's a question that was asked um, last week by the brother Mukhtar about the issue of, okay, in America, we don't have a government that goes out and collects the zakat uh, for the animals, right? So in that instance, what is what do we do? So if we are in a situation where we actually do have the amount of livestock which necessitate giving zakat, then that should be given in money. All right, so you don't uh, you don't give them a live animal, and you don't distribute live animals and stuff. You just give them the um, the value of those animals, and you and you do it just like you would zakat al fitr, right? So like zakat al fitr, you try to find someone that is a faqir or miskeen, right, or one of the people who are which we covered already, those people who you can give zakat to, right? So it could be someone who is um, not, whose zakat is not eligible for, meaning middle class or poor, or someone who is traveling but cut off from their wealth, their, their money, or someone who is not Muslim, but you want, but you believe that by giving them zakat, that this will be something that will soften their hearts and make them inclined to Islam. So, you know, your relatives that you um, you can give zakat to, that means uncles and aunts and, and uh, cousins and so forth. Of course, you can give, you cannot give zakat to the immediate family, meaning um, uh, fathers and mothers and sons and daughters. Right, and, and going down and going up like that. Okay, and I'm sorry to say, but uh, this class is done. I mean, like I, I told you that this class was going to be very short uh, today, and please forgive me for for how short the class is. A lot of things is going on um, right now, but I felt that it was necessary that we at least go through some of the material, you know, so we can get closer and closer to completing uh, the subject matters that we've started, inshallah ta'ala, and we don't want to remain stagnant. So because of the, you know, the progression that we want to have, we hope Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala endow, endow us with understanding from the little bit that we cover and with that being said, I'll open the floor up for any questions, inshallah ta'ala, if there are any. And hopefully I can hear what you guys are saying. Because uh, I, right now, I don't think I can. Um, give me a second. So first of all, are there any questions? If there are any questions, like raise your hands or something like that, so I can see if there's a question. If there aren't any questions, then I don't have to figure out how I can actually hear what you guys are saying. Because I don't know how I'm going to do that yet. Hmm. Okay, no questions. So the brother Dawood, he came kind of late. Uh, sorry, brother, but, you know, class is over. <laughs> oh, long as time. But uh, oh, I'm glad to see that you were able to make it. Can you, Say that again. Uh, class started at uh, 8.30. Yeah, and I know that, you know, the slot that came in, too, as well, you probably had to make that. That's another reason why yes. I wanted to cut this short, because there's some of us that, you know, want to make salat and things like that. So hopefully for those who uh, want to pray, Isha, this is a good time to pray. And uh, maybe we'll we'll uh, reschedule the time um, so that it will be easier for those who, you know, Isha is a problem. Uh, with the time of the class, uh, inshallah ta'ala, I'll see what we can do for tomorrow. I just don't want to change it too, too drastic because, you know, consistency is what we're trying to work for here. And alhamdulillah, the Salat al-Isha is a, a Salat that the time is very, 
um, broad. So, you know, we can uh, cover 10 minutes of class before we pray. And that was my intention uh, today. Uh, that's why, another reason why I was glad that, you know, the class wasn't going to be long today. Um, the subject matter that we covered and we are going to continue to cover is Aqeedah, you know, dealing with the, uh, the beliefs of the Muslim, Ahl al-Sunnati wal Jamara. Uh, uh -huh. Specifically, right now we are covering the names and attributes of Allah, and then the other subject matter is uh, fiqh, uh, Islamic jurisprudence from the book uh, Kifatul Hulam by Sheikh Nabalusi, Rahimahullah, and we're right now in the um, topic of zakat. And we're still dealing dealing with zakat of the um, the ibel or the camel. Right, we started we started that like maybe about a couple of weeks ago, and I'm trying to go through it because it's just a lot of numbers, and now we're getting to higher numbers where uh, a lot of people probably will never, and Allah knows best, have that amount of camels available where where they need to uh, pay zakat for it. So I do feel that it's probably necessary for us to move on. Um, but at the same time, I don't want to uh, take anything away from the material and, you know, any, everything I think deserves to be covered, no matter how insignificant it might seem to some of us, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, any other questions? So a class is from, Isha has the same time here as it is over there. I'm, I'm not, I know y'all in Ohio. It came in, it came in, in Cleveland and it came in at 8.30, exactly. Like when I was starting class, it said that each show was in. I was like, oh, man. So, yeah, um, each show came in at 8.10 over here. Oh, okay, mashallah. Well, then that's good. You got, yeah, you got, yeah. you got a, a good window to be able to make it and stuff like that without it. too much of a problem. Um, yeah. Depending on where you're praying. If you're praying in Jamaica, of course, that might not be as easy. As if you were praying by yourself, you were praying by yourself, you know, it comes in, you pray, then you can get yourself situated. But in Jamaah, you have to wait until the congregation. Yeah, they, the, the Jamaah prays at 8.30. <laughs> okay, so, that's what it is, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's a little tough, yeah. Okay, inshallah, okay. so class tomorrow? Class tomorrow, inshallah, and we're, we're going to shoot for 8.30 still, but we're going to keep it short so that way, you know, if, some, if it comes in, at a time when you know brothers and sisters have to pray, you know, uh, ten minutes wouldn't won't won't be too much of a, a hindrance, inshallah, and they could uh, get the class in and also uh, pray uh, Isha, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, so with that, man, we say Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, wa shahadu an la ilaha illa ant wa sabfiruka wa tubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.